Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide and the next video in our Remembering series. In this special series I look back on the history of various different rides and attractions and also full theme parks that are unfortunately no longer with us. In this video I'm going to be looking back at the history of and sharing my memories from Nightmare at Camelot Theme Park. Now Camelot did unfortunately close at the end of 2012 and there's been quite a lot of demolition actually taking place over the past year or so at the park. Now I have actually filmed one of these remembering videos for Camelot theme park itself so if you haven't already seen that check it out here on theme park worldwide. Along with that I thought that I wanted to go into more detail about one of the coasters there in particular and that is Nightmare. Now this was an absolutely fantastic ride that unfortunately wasn't in the UK for a long period of time. Now this ride actually operated previously at a theme park over in Japan and I'll move on to that shortly. Now the Firstly, let me talk about Nightmare itself. Now, the ride was actually designed by Schwarzkopf, a fantastic manufacturer that uh, many people out there love, and I do too. They're no longer uh, producing rides. However, um, they've created some absolutely fantastic attractions over the years and some absolute classics. Uh, Schwarzkopf designed the ride, and then they also worked in collaboration with Zero to build um, the ride as well. So, um, you know, with this coaster, it was just such an icon for the park. And when it opened there, um, in 2007 it certainly brought a lot of people into the park after a few years of declining visitor numbers this was a big staple ride for them however it wasn't actually a new ride that opened in 2007 its original location was over at a theme park in Japan where it opened and um, back in 1987 it was known as the Bavarian Mountain Railroad and as you can see from the image here it had a lot of theming around it you've got a little building on the top there um, all different rock work there's archways and it looked absolutely fantastic. Now unfortunately that theme park did close at the end of 2006. Now when that did close um, of course the ride was then bought by Camelot Theme Park and then shipped over to the UK. Unfortunately Camelot didn't actually bring the theming over. Um, I think the, the overall plan really with Nightmare uh, once they put it in at Camelot was to paint the track, was to maybe give it a bit of a theme but they'd spent three million pounds bringing it over and refurbishing the ride to get it up to a good standard. The fact that it was an older ride from 1987 meant that it needed quite a lot of work to actually um, get this thing up to scratch and fit with health and safety standards here in the UK and get into operation. So once they bought the ride and shipped it over, um, it was starting to make its way over at the end of uh, 2006, early 2007, when the ride started to be erected at Camelot. And um, I remember actually visiting the park during the construction of this. I mean, Camelot was a park that I went to a few times a year with my parents. They always used to take me. And um, we had a great time. And um, I remember this coaster going in and looking into the history of it and thinking, blimey, this is a great ride. Um, but one thing about it, it wasn't the prettiest coaster to look at. And like I say, with this ride. Uh, unfortunately, during its time at Camelot, there was no theming um, around it. They didn't get to repaint the track. One thing they did do, though, was refurbish the trains. Now, when it used to operate over in Japan, it could actually run up to five trains. Bear in mind, each train can seat 14 riders. So um, it was a pretty high throughput attraction, and it had various different block sections throughout to accommodate running that. Um, now, all the trains were purchased by Camelot Theme Park. However, they only actually refurbished three of them. The other two were just kept in storage at the park. I imagine just in case, you know, they needed them uh, uh, later on down the line um, to replace them. I imagine they never thought they'd run five trains on it. Um, they thought we may as well have them. Uh, and then of course, if, if any of the other trains needed more parts or came to the end of their life, they could bring in the other two trains that they built too. The three trains, what they did run on Nightmare uh, were actually completely refurbished. Um, they had different color schemes on there. They had the Nightmare logo and branding um, and fit really nicely actually. Um, with the theme of the park. Unfortunately, the rest of the ride didn't uh, have much to go for it at all, unfortunately. But um, you know what? It certainly um, was a great ride to experience. Now, in terms of where it was located, right down at the back of the park, um, if you went to Camelot, you'll know you had to sort of walk in and then down a bit of a ramp um, to get to the bottom section. And then you climb kind of back up again to get to this big area at the back. That's where the Whirlwind was, a spinning coaster, Excalibur. Lots of other attractions were featured down there over the years. Um, but 
then from 2007, it was the home of Nightmare. Now, the queue line didn't have any theming. The station wasn't themed, but it was covered. It wasn't an open station uh, with no roof. It was a, a covered in station, so that did, of course, protect the trains. And um, like I say, it could run three trains. Um, when I visited, I, it normally was running two trains or even one, especially in, in its last year. I remember when I visited um, in 2012 before the ride closed. But um, I do remember riding it that year and thinking, oh, this is a, a brilliant coaster. You know, I rode it in opening year. I rode it, of course, every year that, that I visited there at uh, Camelot between um, 2007 and 2012 when, when unfortunately it closed. But it's a shame that such a fantastic ride um, is no longer with us anymore because as I'll move on to later in the video, the ride was actually demolished. This time last year, actually, February 2020, the ride was scrapped. But um, let's talk about the ride experience itself. So like I say, um, the fact that it, it would run up to three trains, it could seat 14 riders, um, two per row. It had a brilliant lap bar on there, which was great. Um, loads of room in the trains, very comfortable. Bit of a headrest at the back as well. And also it had a seat belt that needed to be fastened as well um, as the uh, lap bar restraints. Now, when it was dispatched, there was a fantastic announcement that really built up the atmosphere. And also a, a horn used to go off as well as it made its way out of the station, started to climb straight away. Way, and it was a curved lift hill to the right. Now, it would make its way up there. You'd get some really good views of the park and that the area around. You could also see uh, the M6 motorway over in the distance as well. I know a lot of people could remember seeing Nightmare even up until early last year when it was still standing. Um, you could see Nightmare from the M6. Now, um, once you got to the top, um, you got a great view over that bottom end of the park and the rest of the layout for this ride. And it was pretty tall, actually. 87 feet um, was the maximum height. Um, of Nightmare um, and like I say with this you got some fantastic views 26 meters um, with the view at the top there all the way across the park um, now once you actually got up there it would then start to drop round to the right into quite a big first drop actually for this and the position of that was great because you actually walked into the area around Nightmare and that first drop just came over the top and that's also where they attached the big sign for it as well that's the only piece of theming really it had was the Nightmare sign but I tell you what, on that drop, you started to realise, blimey, this thing's quite forceful. It then made its way round into a ginormous overbank, um, overbank turn, which was great. I really enjoyed that. And you've got to think, this ride would have been a lot better if it had still had the theme in that it had in Japan, but it was still a cracking coaster. It kind of, most of the ride was pretty compact, but this overbank curve just came all the way out. Um, and then, of course, you made your way then back um, over into that main section of the ride. It's all because of how it was originally designed for the park in Japan with all the rockwork facade and little buildings that section just made its way out you know um, out to the front of it once you came back through there it then was a lot going on in quite a short space of time there was lots of different helixes and turns um, some brilliant uh, drops as well I'll always remember there was a fantastic drop that um, felt nearly vertical it banked around to the right and it was absolutely fantastic that was also the most intense part of the ride you'd pull up to 5g at that point of nightmare so um, yeah that was great at the bottom of that and as it curved back up um, was brilliant and really intense. I remember having a bit of a grey out moment the first time I went on it in 2007 uh, which was brilliant. Following on from that there was a couple of intense helixes at the end and it really kept up the speed all the way through until hitting the brake run. Now it was a fantastic ride that had some great forces, no inversions but um, it was just so forceful and like I say the couple of great drops that it had on there, um, some of the turns and just transitions that were on that ride were fantastic. Now now, unfortunately, Camelot theme park did close at the end of 2012. And there was a lot of people then, including myself, that were really hoping that Nightmare was going to get bought by another park. And there was a lot of rumours flying around that, oh, it was up for sale and a park might buy it. And uh, unfortunately, um, that wasn't the case because as we all know, the ride was SBNO, standing but not operating, um, from 2012 through until last year, February 2020. So yeah, you know, that's a long period of time where that ride was just standing but not operating. However, it did nearly get saved. So of course, I'm going to move on from the, the history now to after the, the ride has closed. Now, um, like I say, it, it was up for sale. Nobody seemed to buy it. However, um, 2015, so nearly three years after 
the park closed, it was still standing there. And at this point, it could have just about been saved, I think. You know, you've got to bear in mind, it was starting to get rusty, but it was probably at the point where it could have just about been saved. And Southport Pleasureland, we thought, hang on a minute, they might be buying it because this image was released, the owner of Southport Pleasureland with Nightmare there. As you can see, running over some water, all painted up white, um, supports with red track. And he wanted to bring Nightmare to Southport. And we all thought, that's brilliant. And it's also very realistic because Southport, as we all know, is not that far away from Camelot. So it could have been great. Unfortunately, um, it didn't happen like that because it then went all a bit quiet until I took a photo in 2017 at Southport Pleasureland, which was this photo. And as you can see here, you've got the Nightmare trains, or at least a couple of them. And along with that, some of the track as well for Nightmare, some of the flat sections. And I thought, hang on a minute, could this ride still be getting saved and opening at Southport? After that, we heard nothing of it. And I remember seeing them trains the year after, and then the year after that, at Southport, just getting covered over and um, with bits and, yeah, all greenery growing over them. And I thought... It's not looking good. And then, of course, we heard that the demolition teams had moved in um, early last year. I went down there to actually go and check out what was happening, film the video. Um, and then, of course, uh, this is where I got this very devastating footage of the ride being demolished. Now, you've got to think, with a ride like this, the scrap value is probably worth more than the ride itself now, as much as it sounds me to say it. And that's what happened. The ride got completely torn down and scrapped. And um, there was getting a lot of urban explorers, people climbing it and very dangerous, of course. Um, they actually had a fence put up around the ride itself, even inside the park boundary to keep people out. But people still got in. There was graffiti on the ride. Um, you know, something needed to happen with it. So, uh, you know what? It doesn't make me as sad now knowing that it's been demolished. It made me more sad seeing it there when I was driving up to Blackpool on the M6 and seeing it there. It was sad. But now, as much as it's emotional that it's gone, at least we don't have to see it and staring us in the face. Whether Southport Pleasureland have still got the trains and that bit of track, I don't know. I imagine they have. The owner there likes to buy little bits of track and um, all sorts of little bits in there. But um, yeah, who knows what he might do with them at some point in the future. It's not like you can just put them on another ride. You might make a feature of it in the park at some point. But who knows? But uh, yeah, it was a fantastic ride. It was intense. It was snappy. It was never particularly themed, but it was a great ride for Camelot. And it's one that I certainly do miss. Did you get to experience Nightmare? Comment down below on this video. I would love to know. And if you haven't already, check out the Remembering Camelot theme park video that was uploaded last year here on the channel. Uh, but it was a great ride. 792 metres of track, 2,601 feet. Um, like I say, very different helixes. That uh, near vertical bend that was on there, that 5G bend, which was absolutely incredible. It really was. Now, um, if you do want to experience something similar to this, you can get yourself out to Sweden and go to Grona Lund an experienced jet line. The layout is very similar. The ride experience is very similar and it's a brilliant attraction. So I recommend heading out to Grona Lund. They've actually got a brand new B&M inverted coaster opening this year as well. Um, so why not? If you missed Nightmare, um, go and check this out. And the park's beautiful. It's by the waterfront in Stockholm and it's great. Another similar ride that was kind of a collaboration really, a Schwarzkopf design but Zero built the track, um, was actually the Liseberg Bannon um, over at Liseberg in Sweden too. So Sweden loves these rides, don't they? But um, yeah, go and check that out. That's a great ride. It's a completely different layout, but it fits on the hillside and it's got a lot to it. It's beautiful. Got some great drops and helixes and some great uh, intense moments as well up on the hillside at Liseberg. So um, there is other versions of the ride to check out and especially Jetline if you want a near similar experience, but it still won't be our very own nightmare. As much as Jetline looks more beautiful and Liseberg Bannon is in a much better um, position in the park, um, you know what? I, I, I do miss Nightmare and I wish it was still here. It's not unfortunately, however, um, who knows in the future, um, you know, what we're going to see happen with them uh, trains down at Southport. I know we can't see them put onto another ride, but maybe a bit of a memorial in the park, a flower bed made, made from them for people's memories of the ride at Camelot. It would be quite nice, wouldn't it? And a little feature in the park too. So let me know your thoughts on Nightmare down below. Did you ride it? Did you want to ride it? Um, let me know your experiences. I'm always interested in knowing. And thank you for joining me, Sean Sandbrook, for another video here on Theme Park Worldwide. Brand new videos to enjoy every single day here on the channel. So thank you so much to everyone one who supports us and, uh, and watches all our different videos. Thank you very much. That leaves me with one final thing to say. Goodbye, Nightmare, and get out there and keep on riding. See you soon.